Welcome back. Could the U.S. avoid the fiscal cliff with cuts almost twice the size of sequestration and do it with less pain? Taxpayers for Common Sense has a plan on the table that they promise does just that. Now, this group has outlined $2 trillion in budget cuts over 10 years. That's $800 billion more than what will be cut if Congress does nothing by December 31st and automatic spending uh, and budget cuts are enacted. So how's that possible and where would the cuts come from? Let's talk about it. Joining me right now from Washington with a breakdown is Ryan Alexander, the president of Taxpayers for Common Sense. Ryan, it's nice to have you on the program. Thanks very much for joining us. Thanks for having me. So for so long, all we talk about is the low-hanging fruit, that is defense cuts, as well as the entitlements, Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security. Where do you see opportunity for cuts? We see opportunity across the budget, in agriculture, in transportation, it, as you say, in defense and in general uh, government programs, but really across the government we think there's opportunities. Probably if you look at crop insurance or commodity payments in the agriculture sector, that can add up to $100 billion. There are smaller items like beach replenishment, that's a billion dollars. But, you know, a billion here, a billion there, pretty soon it adds up to real money. We wanted to provide a menu of thoughtful choices to reduce our deficit and avoid sequestration. Okay, so just go through it for us because, you know, if, I guess if it were that easy, you know, it would have been a lot uh, simpler getting to the point that we're at. So can you talk to us specifics about what you think sure. should be cut? Sure. I mean, our, that's what we wanted to do in this report is it's more than $100 billion in agriculture, more than $100 billion in energy. And as I said, in agriculture, commodity crop payments, reforming crop insurance in energy, we'd like to eliminate the entire Title 17 loan guarantee program, which includes the loan guarantee, you know, the program that brought you Solyndra. We'd like to eliminate some of the subsidies that have gone to some of the oldest and most profitable energy sectors, from the intangible drilling costs to uh, the allowance for last year first out accounting, which actually affects more than the energy sector, but is, is just a, bo is a boondoggle for taxpayers in the U.S. It's not something that's allowed by international accounting standards. In the defense sector, and we think there's a real opportunity yeah. for savings by reducing service contracts. They're at record high levels, you know, like any other business tightening its belt, reduce our costs for outside vendors. Some of these things can be, A, just done more efficiently with more oversight and fewer uh, overruns, cost overruns, but also just done more cheaply. Why do you think this isn't being done now? You know, I think a lot of everything we have in our report we think is actually kind of the low-hanging fruit substantively. But politically, we have no illusions that these are all easy. Everybody's got their constituency that they're going to support. And so these are things that we just we need leadership. We need people to say this is the right thing. The evidence doesn't support continuing to spend money on the Osprey, which has a 6% effectiveness rate in combat. We can't have our troops using equipment that doesn't work, so let's stop paying for it. We can't give money to industries that are incredibly profitable, so let's stop just giving money to people who have land that used to be farmed. Let's stop these programs that we can no longer afford and don't pack a policy punch that we need them to. Yeah, I mean, I, all of this is, is very important and very good ideas, but we, we noticed that your proposal doesn't address the two biggest entitlement programs, Social Security and Medicare. Can you really get to those savings without sort of hitting the juggernauts? You know, we're not done working, but at, the, at this point, I think, you know, what we wanted to do was provide something that the lame duck Congress could look at and start thinking seriously about how to avoid sequestration. Absolutely, we need to do very thoughtful reform of Medicare and Social Security, and we'll keep working on that. But, you know, looking at the discretionary budget, looking at taxing at, at our tax policy, there's a lot that can be done right now, and we wanted to provide some of those options. Some people say the, the results of sequestration, it's actually not a bad thing because it will sort of focus our priorities, getting the country's debt and deficit under, under control. What do you think about that? Well, sequestration cuts the good along with the bad. Not everything government does is wasteful and not everything government done is, does is good. We should go after the wasteful first. We should go after the policies which we know don't achieve the goals they were set out to, to meet. So I think that we don't think that sequestration, you know, sequestration was set up as a threat, as such a horrible threat that it would force Congress to act. And it hasn't forced Congress to act yet. But we hope that it will in the lame duck, that they'll take some thoughtful steps yeah. by going after wasteful programs first. You're right. It ha certainly hasn't gotten them to act yet. Ryan, good to talk with you. Thanks so much. Thanks so much for having us. We'll see you soon. Ryan Alexander, Fast Money begins in just a few minutes, top of the hour.